Hey everybody, this is Andy Scott with the Medic Coordinating Center coming to you with another quick video to talk about the 2025 Medic VBR measures, which are starting soon. So the first thing to talk about with the 2025 VBR measures for Medic are the timelines. So two big things to remember here, um, and this is unchanged from 2024. So the performance period, which is the time you'll be actually graded on how you're doing, runs from September 1st of 2024 through August 31st of 2025. Um, as is noted here, this is different than the P4P period, which runs from November to October. And we'll talk about the new P4P measures at the October 25th collaborative-wide meeting. So you'll be performing on these VBR measures starting on September 1st this year. And then if you are successful in these measures, the payment period actually runs from March 1st of 2026 through February 28th of 2027. So um, you may hear these measures referred to a little bit differently depending on what the audience is. So when we talk about performance period, this is really our 2025 period, but Blue Cross will sometimes call this the 2026 VBR because that's when the money is actually paid out. Okay, so now the actual VBR. So we have three types of VBR for 2025. This is basically exactly the same as it was in 2024. So the first type is our 3% collaborative-wide VBR. Our second type is a 2% hospital slash individual physician performance VBR. And finally, the third one is our 2% smoking cessation VBR. And I'll go into a little bit more detail on each of those. So the first one, our 3% collaborative performance VBR. This is one that's been around for a while, and there is a little bit of a change this year. So um, again, this is collaborative-wide performance. So we measure everyone, all hospitals are eligible, all their cases to get our performance number. So in the past, we've done this as only our two head injury measures, the adult appropriateness and the peds utilization. This year, we are adding in chest x-ray for kids. And the twist this year is that you need to make two out of three targets for the collaborative to meet this 3% VBR. In the past, it's been a two out of two. We only had the two head injuries and it was all or nothing. We either everybody got it or nobody got it based on if we met these two targets. This year, we've got a little bit of a twist. We threw chest, chest x-ray in, and we only need to make two out of the three to hit the, to actually receive the VBR. So our targets for each of these for peds head injury, 16, less than 16%. That's um, down from 18% last year. Um, for adult head injury, it is greater than 61%, which is up from 60% last year. And then the new one, chest x-ray, is less than 25%. And this is one where we are measuring this as unweighted. So every hospital will be treated equally, regardless of your volume. So less than 16% for peds head injury, greater than 61% for adult head injury, and less than 25% for chest x-ray for respiratory conditions. All of these, again, measured September 1st, 2024 through August 31st, 2025. And this is a kind of the team sport part of our VBR. So as a collaborative, if we meet two out of these three, everyone will get the 3% VBR. If we don't meet two out of three, so if we meet zero or one out of three, um, no one will get this, um, regardless of how your individual hospital or physician does. Okay, the second type of VBR we have is the optional 2% hospital or individual physician VBR. Uh, the WIS program is designed exactly the same as it was in 2024, with just a little bit of progression on some of the targets. So if you remember in 2022 and 2023, we used to grade each individual physician on their own performance. Um, we found that to be a little bit hard to do and not always totally fair based on sample size. So in 2024, we adjusted this to measure the performance at the hospital level, but still required the individual physician to do the participation portion. So same thing this year. So We've got the four imaging measures available. So adult head CT, peds head CT, diagnostic yield for pulmonary embolism and chest x-ray utilization for the peds respiratory conditions. So we think of this VBR as a two, two segment way of accomplishing this. So the first thing you have to do is each hospital has to pick one of these four measures by October 1st of 2024 that they're gonna work on for their performance target. And then as a group, all cases at that hospital have to meet the meet or exceed the target of whichever measure they chose. So that's 16, less than 16% on peds head injury, greater than 61% on adult head injury, greater than 8.5% on PE, or less than 25% on chest x-ray. So first thing you got to do, first box you got to check, pick your measure, and as a hospital, all cases at your hospital exceed the target. 
Second thing that you have to do for individual physicians is they have to complete this participation portion, which is exactly the same as we've done in the past. So your individual physicians will need to have a Medic Tableau registry account. If they already have one, they don't have to create a new one. And then once during the second half of this measurement year, so starting on March 1st of 2025, running through August 31st of 2025, they'll need to log into the Medic registry and fill out a quick uh, performance survey that shows that they actually looked up their own performance. So um, those are the two things you have to do. So as a site, you have to meet the target and then your individual physicians have to do the participation part. Now, who actually receives the incentive is based on the individual on the NPI of the physician. So if both boxes are checked for that physician, they will qualify for the VBR. So you could have a situation where your hospital, say you've got a group of 20 physicians, your hospital meets your performance target, but only 16 of those 20 of your 20 physicians actually go in and do the participation portion. In that scenario, your 16 physicians who did the participation portion will get the 2% uplift or fee schedule increase in the next year. The four who did not will not. So um, that's the way this one works. If you, in the scenario that you don't meet your target, your performance target, none of your doctors will qualify for this VBR, regardless of how you do as a, um, regardless of whether they do, they do the participation or not, and regardless of what their individual performance is. So kind of that first box you have to check is getting your hospital to meet its performance target. Okay, so just a really quick recap what I just said. Let's talk through just a step-by-step. -step, how do you get this 2% individual physician or hospital VBR? One, choose your imaging measure that you're going to work on as a site. Two, actually meet the target for that, that measure that you chose. And then for your individual physicians to receive the free schedule increase, they've got to do these two things. Get a Medic, Medic Tableau registry account and complete the performance survey between March 1st and August 31st of 2025. And Kind of like these bottom two things are the, the caveats. If the individual physician doesn't meet the performance target, they will still get the incentive as long as the site does. Um, and then if the site doesn't meet the target, none, none of the physicians are eligible for the fee schedule increase, regardless of their individual performance or participation. So hopefully we can use this slide as just kind of your one, two, three, four, five checklist of how to make sure that your hospital is in a good position to be successful in this 2%. All right, our final VBR here is the optional smoking cessation VBR, which is offered in collaboration with the Healthy Behavior Optimization of Michigan CQI. Um, we've been doing this for a couple of years now. This is 100% optional. Um, we've got about maybe somewhere between a third and a half of the hospitals in Medic are participating in this and showing pretty decent success, which is pretty cool. So um, as a reminder, what you have to do to be successful in this VBR is to offer smoking cessation counseling to patients who have COPD and are active smokers. So there is no abstraction in this module at all. So you have to send this, all this data through your monthly data upload. And so it does require some work with IT to get this right. And we can talk you through that if you're interested. So the target on this one has progressed a little bit. In the past, um, last year, you just had to have one month out of the year where you had more than 10% of these patients received the smoking cessation counseling. This year, because of the success we've had with the hospitals that are participating, the targets moved up a little bit. So there's two ways you can get, you can be successful on the performance part of this. The first way is to have one month out of 12, where you have greater than 25% of your eligible patients receive the counseling. The other way is to have three separate months where you go over 10%. So um, two different ways to do it, either get three months over 10% or one month over 25%. And I think one of the nice things with this is that if your hospital has not been working on this and you decide you want to a couple months into the year, it is still achievable to meet the mark, even if you miss a couple months of data collection. So um, the things you need to do here are one, decide if you're going to do it. Um, and then you have to start sending in your um, smoking, uh, smoking status and cessation counseling status of every patient is part of your regular monthly upload. Um, and then you have to tell me um, and if you don't want to change this, if you're already doing it, you don't want to change it, no worries. If you want to change it, let me know. Or if you're new, you need to define your patient population because there are different ways to approach this. You can either do all qualifying patients, regardless of their discharge disposition, only admitted patients that fall into this um, category, or only discharged patients. You just have to let me know which one you want to do, and we'll set up the data collection and the data uh, monitoring and performance measuring to make sure that we're getting the right patients into your cohort. So again, optional VBR, you can get a 2% uplift, um, successful by having one month of over 25% or 
three months of over 10%. This is, and again, measured at your hospital level. So all patients that present to your hospital that are qualifying in each month. All right, to wrap this up quickly, um, the next steps that you need to do to participate in Medic VBR for 2025, one, as always, ensure your physicians are enrolled in a Blue Cross Blue Shield PGIP PO. Um, if you don't know what that means, reach out. We will help you try to navigate that. That's definitely Blue Cross's world, but we're learning more and more and are trying to be as helpful as we can. But if you're not in a, if your physicians are not in a PGIP PO, they will not receive the money regardless of what they do as far as performance and participation. For the 2%, VBR, I mean, it's optional, but you just need to tell us what you're doing. So choose your measure by August or excuse me, by October 1st. Let me know. Make sure your physicians have a Tableau account and then make sure they do the survey when it comes out in March of 2025. Then three, if you want to do smoking, make sure you're sending us all the data that we need. And then let me know what your target population choice is by October 1st of 2024. So we'll talk about this at the 2025. At the October um, Collaborative Wide Meeting, we'll go through as much as we can. Um, this is coming in an email that will have all this information laid out, but I wanted to also create this video to kind of just talk it through. So any and all questions, no questions too small. We, we really want everyone to be successful in these VBR measures. So shoot me an email, um, give me a call, let me know what I can do to help clarify this and hopefully make this a successful 2025 Medic VBR year. Thanks.